Okay, my, the goal of to, today is first to explain, uh, because about product management, we, don't, we won't speak about uh, operational issues or strategical issues, like, you know, we, I, I, won't, I won't talk about the Scrum or Agile methodologies of this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna talk in, in, in a more strategical perspective. So it's not about the, day, the daily things that uh, product management should do, it's about what I should expect from a good product manager. So this is based on a, a book, a Ben Horowitz book. Ben Horowitz, it's, uh, I know someone knows who it is. It's uh, nowadays a venture capitalist. He holds with um, uh, Mark Anderson, a VC. Um, he wrote a, a book, and there was in, in this book a paper about good and bad product management, uh, which is really, really, really uh, cool. So. The idea is based on, on, on that book, but what I will tell also is my perspective through Kipu. So at the end, uh, I will be happy to, to answer any questions you might have or you would like to know in general terms or about Kipu. Just feel free to ask. Um, first, who I am? I am Roger. I'm the founder and CEO at Kipu. It's an invoicing and accounting online software. Um, I will tell you a little bit more the kind of things that we are doing. But First, I would like to ask, who is a freelancer here, for example? Hi, freelancer. Who, is, who owns a company? Cool, not bad. Um, and the next question is, who loves to do uh, accounting and administrative issues? You should do, okay. <laughs> because you're accountants, isn't it, or not? <laughs> uh, yeah, usually people don't like to do this kind of stuff. Okay, if you're an accountant, sure. But if you are not, you hate it. So the thing is that our main challenge was to provide a tool so that everyone could first, I don't know what to say about enjoy, but at least uh, to be as less painful as possible, everything related to administrative issues. Uh, so the way that we can do it is by automatizing data entry processes, which is the, the worst things that, that we have to face. Um, the thing is that, and the good thing about the, our product is that although you are big or you are small, you must do this kind of stuff. Because if not, if you don't do it, the tax, uh, the government will come and, and punish you. So the good thing about our product is that we are delivering a tool so that everyone is able to use it, but it's a tool that everyone must do it. So uh, our main challenge was to, to, to solve something that nowadays, especially in Europe, is not solved because Still in Europe, uh, main, the, main pro, the main programs, uh, the main so softwares are offline. People still use paper, and, and we want to change this, something that in the United States or, or in the United Kingdom, it's quite different. There are already online accounting softwares like Xero or QuickBooks, but it's something that in Europe, it doesn't happen. So that was, uh, that, and, and in Spain, for sure, it doesn't exist. Um, so this was the main, our main challenge. So this is the kind of stuff that, that we do. And, and, and at the end, uh, still in Spain, it's, uh, it's complicated because people is not used to use these kind of tools. But, but, but it's something that everyone knows that, that, that will, ch will, will change. So not talking about, uh, about product management, in our case, and this is the, 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 for me, the most important thing. We are a company that we are building a software. We are building a software as a service. So what we do is to build a software and sell it. That's what we do here, all, uh, all the people that is working in Tokipo. So it's obvious for me that the, the highest impact, uh, the product is for sure the, the thing that, that have a higher impact in the, in, in the company. So you must treat it properly. If you've had a shitty product, you won't sell nothing. Because at the end, sell is, to sell things, in general, it's super complicated. If the product is it's, it's shitty, you won't do nothing. And everyone will just leave the company because they don't believe in your product, they don't believe in what they are selling, so at the end, it's not just about uh, revenue impact, but also it's about uh, the morale of the team. So people will start being disappointing and, and, and will leave. So first thing, which is super important, is that me as a CEO, but also people who deal with the product, 
uh, must be aware that this is all you've got. It's all you've got totally. Then, what is the product management? The product manager at the end is the CEO uh, of the product. And what does it mean? First, um, like the CEO, he has a, a cross-functional leadership. What it does it mean? He's someone that, that, that has to be aware of what's going on into the company, into all departments. Because at the end, you are building a product and you're selling it. And you're doing just that. You're working for thousands of customers, uh, just providing your product. So the product manager must understand all of them and understand their problems uh, uh, them as, as possible. And what, one thing that is important is that they have a, a, a whole full picture of, 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 the, of the vision of the product. So he must understand what we already did, what the things that the, it doesn't work and the thing that it will probably work and work on that. And of course, tell these kind of things into the team so that everyone can be uh, in, the same, in the same line. A lot, of, uh, a lot of times, uh, product managers are, are thought as, as, as a marketing resource. This, I think, is a, it's a huge mistake because at the end, okay, to sell the product is important, but at the end, if you don't have this broad vision, this, it's a problem. And what usually happens is that you usually have a lot of excuses, like, okay, um, for example, in Kipu, we are 12 people. We are competing against players who has thousands of people, they, they do thousands of revenues. I cannot say, okay, I cannot uh, face them because I don't have money, I don't have resources. Fuck it, I mean, just deal with it. Uh, it's your job to, 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 to provide value to our, our customers given the resources. Of course, we are not Microsoft, uh, we don't have that chance to, to do it, uh, to, to spend a lot of money on resources. Okay. This, you cannot have excuses. As a product manager, you know what, what you've got and you have to face it. For me, product, management, product manager is, a, is someone who has a, 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 the full picture of the company. Why I say this? First, you should have the goals clear in the sense of uh, you should know what is the main goal of, of for example, if you're in a board of direction, you should know what are the main challenges that we want to face. For example, if, we want to, uh, if our focus is, to, is, is about retention, you should understand that your strategy uh, through the product is based on retention. Uh, if the, your problem is acquisition, so you will face that all the strategy is based on acquisition. So you should have these this higher goals so that you can then translate it into your team uh, doing a specific actions. But this is, is, a, is a totally must, because if not, you're doing just things, but you don't, you don't get the full picture and understanding which is the main goal. Second, about customer underlying needs, sometimes, and it's what is typical, you go to the customer support department, you, and you ask, okay, what's going on here? And you just, and you just take the feedback, and just try to go to the development team and say, okay, people complain about this, this, and this, let's do it. This is a, for me, this is a mistake. A product manager should understand, okay, should listen to everyone, but at the end, there's a, like the, an example, typical example is that uh, people go to Henry Ford no, uh, and, and say, okay, we want faster horses. No, that was not the solution. The solution was the car. No, so this is the kind of things that you should understand. And usually this kind of thing, the, the, the customer won't tell you. The customer will tell about your problems, about a feature that it might work better, etc. But the product management should be able to go one step uh, ahead and understanding how I can solve this problem in a long term and, 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 and being technologically competitive, not just doing a feature and that's it. And about features, when we say about competitors benchmark, it's not about to understand okay, that competitor of mine have this feature, I don't have it, I will have it, so that I can be as, as much competent, uh, competent as him. No, this is not the kind of, uh, of job that they have to do because this is quite a trivial. Um, the thing is that you have to understand what are, what a compet why a competitor uh, is a real competitor or is not. So what I, what I say is that 
In our case, for example, we, there's a lot of invoicing softwares into the market, but at the end, what it is interesting to, to know is not if today's is a competitor, but if tomorrow's it will be. So I know that, that I, I am able to produce a much better innovation, innovative product than, than him because of and reasons. And it's not about features. It's about uh, why they won't be so as competitive as me or on the other way around. Why this player that is smaller than me may be a danger and understanding why it might be a danger. It's not, it's not a matter of features. It's a matter of giving a full picture of what, they, what your competitors are doing and what they did. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Okay, great. Um, I understand the concept of what you're saying. And it's okay. Very Could you give us a specific example? Okay. Um, for example, the, the, the technological stack that, that, that a company might have. For example, okay, Walters Klubers. Walters Klubers, it's a super big company. It's the leader in accounting softwares here in Spain. Uh, but the problem is that the technological stack uh, makes that they cannot go online. It's impossible. They try it, but it's impossible. So, I'll, okay, uh, Walter Scrubbers, it's much better than me. They've got a, well, okay, their revenue is like 90 million just in Spain. So, no, revenue, no, their profits. <laughs> so it's, yeah, but they've got this problem. So for me, it's an opportunity. Although it's a super big player, for me, it's an opportunity because uh, it's not about the feature. They do accounting. I don't do this kind of accounting. It's all right. But I know that because of this technological stack, I can, I can compete with him. Not today, but I, I, I will be able to do it. This is like a super huge example, but this is the idea, okay? And for sure, it sh sh he has to have a, an analytical behave. At the end, uh, why I should do some one thing or the other? Please be analytical. If you're not analytical, uh, it's about subjective things. I mean, customer support, uh, people can be subjective on, because they are talking to customers, but at the end, what it really matters is that the product management uh, brings me data. Data, not just opinions. And this is uh, super important. Okay. For me, and especially in Kipu and in an SaaS company, a product management should be an engineer. Or at least to have some notions of, uh, of development. First, for me, it's, a, it's someone who is more close to, to a development team than in, than in a marketing team. Why? Because at the end, uh, must be able to, to define proper requirements, and this is not trivial. I mean, be able to write things for a development team that they understand, it's quite complicated. <laughs> it really, and this is the most, one of the most important things for me, it's to try to define proper requirements. This is super complicated and super important because at the end, if you've got, okay, our development team is super small, we are four, pe four people, so it's not, I can talk with them. Bueno, in fact, I do as a product management in Kipu, so I do these kind of stuff. But, but the thing is that this is something that is not just about being able to, to make, I don't know, a specific feature, uh, good, but especially to uh, development team should respect product management. And this is not that simple. I mean, usually developers think as an engineers, they, their mind is totally different. Uh, but the thing is that product manager should talk the same language uh, li uh, like, the, like the developer. And this is not to be a developer purely, but he has to have, uh, he has to understand them so that they can both work together. And it's something that seems like, okay, people should be, I mean, developers should uh, listen to the product manager. Yeah, okay, but they have to, it should be like a, a respect relation. And, and it, this is not obvious. And this is the kind of stuff, uh, the kind of information that the product manager delivers to the development team. And the goal, the main goal at the end is that developers help this product manager so that Product manager should be able to understand. Uh, first, they, I mean, first they have to. Development team should be should talk with them, but on the uh, on both directions, and this is super important. And it's not that simple. For me, ideally, I would like to have a, a product manager that that is a developer because I would like him to spend time trying to innovate 
directly. And once they, they've got like a, a, an idea of a given feature or whatever it is, talk to the development team with, with a previous work already done. For example, if I want to integrate a service into Kipu, it would be cool that the product manager is able to take a look at the API, uh, understand how it works, be, take a look if it's enough robust or not. And once this pre-work is done, be able to uh, define these requirements and deliver to the, uh, to the developers. Okay, this is more about for, uh, okay, this is about goals, mainly. It's important, okay, in general, it's important that people have goals, even if uh, it's someone who is, like, just started, uh, or, it's, or even it's, uh, like, a, a C position. Um, but for a product management, sometimes, because it's someone who are in a lot of departments, uh, deals with product, it's quite complicated sometimes to set up goals. And usually what happens is the, pro, uh, the CEO don't set up clear goals to him. And, the, what, and, and what this, for me, the problem is that then a product manager will just not focus on, on what the real important things. So, for example, um, if the goal, for example, it makes sense for a product manager, for a product manager that, that the main goal is, is ARPU. So uh, average revenue per user, for example. So if you set that goal, he will know that he, this is important for the company and everything he's doing, it's for this main goal to increase the, the, the average revenue per user. So first, help, help the product manager uh, to, to, to make that, uh, uh, that his, uh, his uh, goals are clear and then he has to stick to this goal and, 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 and all the decisions um, should be consistent with, with, this, with this goal. This is another point. Usually, developers tend not to care about sales. It's like, okay, I just done the product. That's your job to sell uh, or to market this kind of stuff. But the product manager should understand that there's people that is under a lot of pressure because salesmen, sale, the sales working force should sell, people in marketing have super uh, complicated goals that they have to fulfill, and at the end, they are, product managers should understand that they are selling the product that he's building. So, up to this point, uh, she should, she, she, uh, the product manager should understand that these people is facing uh, are very complicated goals, and he has to be able to think in the short and in the long term. Why I'm saying this? Uh, sometimes um, what, what happens is that, okay, if a product is, is, is not well sold, it's because the salesman is, is a bad person or whatever it is. Uh, and this is the easier reaction sometimes. And, and it's very important to understand why they face problems or what kind of things a product management, uh, a, product ma a good product manager is able to, to, um, to do so that they can help these teams. For example, um, uh, in our case, we, we work for freelancers uh, and companies di directly and for bookkeepers. So uh, I can go to, the, to, the, to my sales team, understand what are the, pro the main problems uh, they are f he are, he's facing and how I can help through product so that he's able to sell uh, better. And this understanding that, okay, I've got uh, short-term things that I should uh, deliver, but also long -term, a long-term vision that I should deliver as well. But be, uh, this, this, uh, this information is super important so that they, they, you can just craft your product uh, properly and help, and help your, your teams. And then the thing is that, and something that usually don't happen, is just to think, for example, that your customers are silly. This is something that you are building a product, a super cool product, you're super happy with it. But then, if, if something is going wrong, people said, okay, my customers are silly. Yeah, your customers might be silly, but this is not a problem. The thing is that you have to face that if your customer is silly, just work for your silly customers so that you should be able to understand 
how, that, how a customer really behaves, not in your idealistic startup uh, idea. I mean, I, I understand software as a service, but usually people don't understand this kind of stuff. They are used to work with other kind of products. So just face it and, and understand that your product uh, will, uh, is, is going to be bought for people who might not talk the same language as you. And, and for sure, you have to understand the real di dynamics of a product, uh, of, a, of, your, of your daily work. For example, in our case, um, you should, uh, a product management should understand how people in, the, in accounting or in administrative uh, department works. And if you truly understand their problems, how they work, etc., you will be able to do a, a good product, not just based on, on your objective idea of, of a, or your ideal idea, uh, but understanding that okay, exactly how they work and how you can help uh, understanding that they may not be as advanced as you would like to have the, your customers. An example, you can do an, 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 uh, an interface design super minimalistic, but then, for example, they don't understand and they won't find where are the things because they are not used to this kind of pattern. So you should understand that you, you, should, you should do these kind of things into your product progressively. Just, just don't create uh, patterns that you understand, but they don't. So this is the kind of stuff that, that, that are important. And finally, for me, the main key skills, uh, besides what I already said, is that first, you should be able to, to communicate properly to everyone in the team. And that's what is complicated, because you should be able to talk to developers and, 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 and make that, okay, if you define some requirements, you should be able to ask to five different developers and expect that this, these five people say the same uh, answer to your, to your, or the same things that in, in for your requirements. But you should be able to communicate to the sales team, to the marketing team, etc. Why? Because at the end, you're building a product and you, you expect that your team uh, sells this product, so you, you should be able to communicate everything you are doing in a, cl a clear and proper way. Second one, one of the most complicated things is to balance this short and long term, because at the end, you should understand that, okay, a fit, and this, there are methodologies, like a Scrum methodologies that helps deal with this kind of stuff, but, but you should be able to understand that, okay, you have to face that you, you have limited resources, and, every, and, and you want to do thousands of things. So it's super important that you're able to balance this time and costs and first be accountant for what you are doing. Because if you spend like, I don't know, one month doing something, a feature, then you should analyze the impact on your business and, uh, and all the time so that you can be better on balancing the short, uh, short term and long term because sometimes you just take decisions because two customers ask for it, you spend like one week doing this, and then, okay, what was the real return of that? So just don't panic. I mean, customers always complain about everything, but you should be able to balance uh, this time and cost and this short and long term. And third, about discipline, because it's a, a super uh, cross-functional position, you should be able to make that everyone is, uh, is, is updated for example, in our case, we, uh, in Kipu, we, although we are just 12 people, it's, it gets complicated that everyone is aware of what's going on. It's really complicated. Uh, although we are just in the same space and we see all the faces all, all day long. Um, so you're, you should be able to keep, I know, for example, you, you, you know what the Scrum methodologies are? Or, yes, one? Okay. This is... Okay, it's a, way, it's a way to work so that, for example, it helps do this kind of stuff. Uh, it's based on uh, doing, like, you know, you just set up for the next 15 or 30 days what you're going to do in terms of product. Um, and then you make, like, daily meetings, like five minutes meetings about what's going on. Uh, just try to tell that, the, you know, to the marketing team, okay, this feature will be launched in one week. Uh, and everyone knows that then we should do this, this, and this, and this. So, because you're just, as I said, no, you're crafting a product and then selling to it, everyone should be aware. 
because at the end when you when you launch something then the sales people will be uh, should be able to talk to all the customers that they might be interested in this feature marketing team should just create campaigns um, uh, I don't know like uh, Google campaigns or whatever it is uh, and then customer support people should be aware of what's what's new so that if someone asks for it uh, uh, customer say customer support people should be able to to explain it so for me it's important that everything should be updated on everything and also when I say requirements it's it's if, if someone in development for example has a question she, he, he has to have to, to spend the time talking to, uh, with them because it's super important that for example development team understand what what he asks for.